Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got Tony with me, and we're going to be talking about the idea behind a greenfield transformation effort, and we'll define that for you in just a minute. But before I dive into the questions that I've got for you, Tony, can you give everybody an introduction? Uh, absolutely. Well, Emma, thanks a lot for having me on your show. And uh, hopefully this goes better than our debate. Uh, but uh, but I'm going to give it a shot. So Tony Grosso, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for EIS. And at EIS, we provide core uh, insurance systems for those ambitious insurers who want to tran digitally transform into the future of insurance. And that's what we provide. Great, thank you. And you mentioned it before I got the opportunity to. If you haven't already, Tony and I did a debate about transformation. We'll put it in the link um, to this, this, this conversation so everyone can see me destroy you there. Um, but <laughs> we actually talk about the idea of Greenfield versus kind of incremental change. And while I was debating you against the merits on my side of things during that, there is something to the idea of a greenfield transformation. And so I wanted to explore that idea a little bit more with you. So to kind of get us started, can you give us your definition of what a greenfield transformation means? Yeah, and um, it's really be been becoming uh, what I think is, I'll call a best practice when it comes to digital transformation, but what is it? So when we talk about Greenfield, we talk about starting with the new. What are you looking to do? Is it a new product? Is it a new channel? Is it a new market? And so from a Greenfield transformation, it's really what, what is your future going to be? And it's, you know, your future is probably going to be different in some way from uh, the past and what you've done. And so what you do in a Greenfield is you focus on the new and all of you get your business lined up, you get your technologies lined up. You don't really worry about your traditional book of business at the moment because that comes later and you build out your new. Uh, and you build it out next to your uh, traditional business, whether it's your traditional business units and your traditional systems, but you really start to build out that new. And then that new in like an evergreen fashion will, it will evolve because you won't get it right right away. Um, and you really want to be in an agile environment where you can get something into market. You can then test and learn. You can make adjustments. You can get back into market. And so doing all of that on your traditional block of business or in your traditional units is really, it's impossible, right? Because those units are not built for that agility. They're built for scale. And with scale, you can't change it frequently. So what you do in the evergreen is you, you set it up on the side and then you're able to tweak, you're able to test, you're able to get in and out of market and make your changes. And then hopefully that business is now growing in an evergreen fashion and continuing to evolve where it now starts to take over your traditional block of business. And what we've been seeing in the industry is that is what the best practice of doing a digital transformation. And we call it Greenfield. So you talked a little bit about maybe some of the areas where a greenfield approach can help us build more agility and maybe counterbalance some of the challenges or risks that would come along with a traditional transformation. But can you dive into a little bit more about how this approach can help mitigate maybe some other risks or minimize those risks along the way? Well, sure. I mean, the uh, well, the major risk is um, when you're trying to do uh, this type of innovation in your traditional block of business, and the way that the even the financial accounting and even the risk management at an insurance company works, if you didn't get your risk profile right, you're actually uh, hurting the profitability on your traditional book of business. And I learned that firsthand when I was leading innovation programs at a major carrier. Uh, and we tried to, to inject the innovation on the main traditional blocks of business, but we didn't have the actuarial data behind because it's an innovation. And if you're off, you're now impacting the profitability and uh, reserve requirements for your traditional block of business. So from a risk management standpoint, setting it up outside of the, those traditional blocks of those traditional accounts is really, really important just from a financial perspective and a risk perspective that way, but also, you putting uh, this type of uh, um, injecting this type of agility into traditional lines of business, like I said earlier, 
that are built for scale, you're now impacting just your general operations with something that you may not yet have right. So having uh, having these types of organizations set up outside really create that wall, that safe zone for you to innovate, test and learn, and quite honestly, get it wrong. Because if you're not getting it wrong and you're not failing, you're not innovating. And you don't want to do all of that in your traditional organization and on your traditional book of business. So you mentioned your experience in innovation at a carrier previously. I'm going to end our conversation with a pretty wide open question for you. But what other types of challenges should leaders that are driving these innovations within insurance or industries beyond kind of be taking a look at trying to mitigate and or lessons that you learned along the way that you think are critical to pass along? Um, well, it's a great question. And you know me, Emma, I'm all about the people when it comes to digital transformation, right? Technology is great, but it's really about the people. And so the best thing about doing a greenfield um, implementation is you are showing the rest of the company what innovation looks like, what your future looks like, and it's giving them the why. They can now see it. And I call that the flagship project. And it's so important when you're transforming an entire organization that you can have something that's demonstrable, achievable, and it's done in a relatively short period of time, because then people can start to see the the why we're doing this, why we're innovating, because they can point to it, they can touch it, they can feel it. And it's not just this abstract concept that's scary to them, because, you know, if they're in a traditional block of business, they've probably been there for several years. And so injecting something very different with that's just a concept is very scary. And that's why the cultural aspect of transformation and digital transformation is so hard. And the beauty is when you do that in the greenfield, you could do a small containerized, it's your flagship project, then you as the care you become the expert on that technology. You know where it works, where it doesn't work. You can then identify, okay, now that we were successful here, now let's take this piece of our traditional block of business because I know the tech will fit there. I know the organization we built will fit there. And you can then tackle that. And we call that a risk mitigated way to do digital transformation. And that's the real beauty of it, Emma, because it's all about the people. For those of you that haven't checked out our, our our debate back and forth, poor Tony was put at a disadvantage having to argue that it wasn't about the people. So um, that made my heart happy to finally hear you come to my side of, of the conversation there, even though I know we set you up against kind of maybe an uphill battle, I suppose, in that debate. Um, but thank you so much for joining me for the conversation, Tony. If you're not already, Make sure you follow Tony and EIS so that you can keep up with the core talk series that we just mentioned. And again, we'll link in the comments. Um, but feel free to reach out to Tony and I if you have any questions. But otherwise, have a wonderful day. Thank you. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.